What's up you guys, you're watching Sergio's Secret. Before I get started with today's video, anything that I'm talking about today will be linked down below. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, I post a video on contemporary and designer fashion on the daily on this channel. And today's video is going to be by the title, are going to be the worst designer items to start your collection. Or maybe if you already have like a decent amount of a collection, like let's say somebody like me, maybe these are items that you may reconsider before purchasing. Um, some of these I have purchased in the past, some of them I currently have, and some of them I thought about and I didn't end up purchasing. So let's go ahead and go through the list. And these are my opinions. I feel like these items, um, for the most part, you can really live without or you may not want to purchase it right in the beginning or right in the get-go because I think there's other items that are were well worth purchasing like maybe like a designer belt a sunglass a card case i think some some of those items are more better to be spent as one of your first purchases or when starting your collection i personally do think that these items um shouldn't be your first item so let's go ahead and get started the first thing is going to be designer water bottles or designer cups or designer little trinkets like I think for me, I think that, you know, I have the Chanel water bottle when the Chanel factory came out. I like it, but I don't use it every day. I use my Hydro Flask a lot more. It was, I think, literally half the price or if not a little bit less. And I use that one a lot more. I think like St. Laurent coffee cups or Tiffany coffee cups. You know, yes, they're pretty and yes, they're nice, but usually they're always over $100 or in the $100 mark or the Prada water bottle. At the end of the day, it is a water bottle. With $100, I'm pretty sure you can find a really nice signature scent. I think you could purchase a pair of sterling silver earrings. I think that there are other things that will better your collection. Go to Nordstrom Rack and buy a beautiful pair of sunglasses around that $100 mark, $150 to $80. You can, you can go on Nordstrom Rack and get some beautiful Ferragamo sunglasses for $80 bucks or some Tom Ford ones for $150. I think that water bottles and all that stuff, and I think a lot of brands are starting to come out with like little things, um, are trying to kind of get away from you to purchase your dream item. So let's say you're starting your collection, right? You have a thousand dollars and you're like, well, should I buy um, this Saint Laurent mini camera bag? That's around a thousand dollars. Maybe should I get different bits and bobs so I can have a little bit of, of everything? I think you're at the end of the day, you do yourself a disservice by purchasing a little trinkets. And a lot of these items, my mom would always say like growing up, it's like, this is a thing in Spanish. It's like the lichero. It's just like a bunch of like random crap. I don't think these items are crap per se but it's just like it's not it's like little knickknacks that you don't really need or you could obviously it doesn't have to be designer you don't have to have a water bottle that says prada yes it's fun yes it's cute maybe once you have a nice collection but i don't think it's something that you should go for and buy right in the beginning so water bottles coffee cups all that stuff over a hundred dollars or around the hundred dollar mark i think you're better off spending your money off other things second one are going to be anything that's undergarments so it's going to be such as socks and bras and underwear and i know like balenciaga came out with like bra sets and panties i think you can get the set for 500 dollars for a cotton one i know tom they have men's tom ford undergarments for like 60 dollars or even versace ones for like around 100 or you know the lace for a gucci set for like 1200 dollars um i think that all that stuff is cute and it's very nice but that's something that no one's really gonna see unless you are with your partner or you know you take a picture maybe post it I don't think that's necessarily worth your money to buy it right in the beginning. I think a lot of the, th I think you're better off, you know, going for an actual, like, let's say, lingerie brand like Commando or Hanky Panky or Spanx or Skims, even at that point. You no, know, I think there are other brands that you could purchase from. I think purchasing, un you know, underwear just so it has a little branding on it and you're spending, you know, $150. I knew somebody who literally spent a $1,200 on that gucci set and they don't even have a designer handbag or a designer shoe and no one really ever gets to see that and this person didn't even post a picture of having it on social media so i don't think that's necessarily worth it or let's say um like socks like alexander mcqueen came out with socks are 85 bucks you can buy a pair of nike shoes for 85 dollars you could buy a lot more other things for 85 dollars at the end of the day especially socks no matter how, you know if the sock is white well at least from my opinion no matter how white the sock is the inside of the shoe it's gonna be like gunk or like it's or even like it's a brand new shoe and let's say the sole is black and you're putting in a white sock a lot of the times with your sweat and stuff this is gonna rub on into the sock and within like one or two washes your sock is basically trash 
and it has literally like it is a piece of like trash basically i don't go through socks pretty fast i usually wear like ankle socks that i get from h&m like a pack of five or i have like, like maybe like my ten dollar socks that i wear on special occasions i think that undergarments is something that you should kind of skip out on i definitely feel like you're better off spending it um you know on brands that are more focused on that item and maybe later down in the future if you do want to buy a balenciaga set and you got it like that and you want to live your balenciaga you know kind of like that calvin klein set that was popular many years ago and that people still wear then i think you should do it but i think really spending 85 dollars on a pair of socks from alexander mcqueen but you don't have alexander mcqueen sneakers or buying 100 dollars versace socks 150 dollars versace socks but you don't have Versace shoes, and that's going to be your first item. I don't think it's worth the money, especially socks pill. They get bubbly. They get, in my opinion, I think socks after, like, a few washes get really, really gross, especially the lighter colors. Personally, that's why most of my socks are black, because you don't really see the wear on them, and you could have them for a longer period of time. So I'm going to say all undergarments are definitely not worth your money, especially when first buying your collection those items also the fit of them and the cuts and the styles tend to be a little bit more traditional and so they're not necessarily flattering take that from me who's purchased you know like designer undergarments and they're not the most flattering they're not even ones that i even use they literally are collecting dust and i have about 500 dollars worth of undergarments that are just there because they don't have the support that I'm looking for. So take that from me and take that from somebody who's bought an ex like, you know, a little bit expensive socks and stuff. Not worth your money. And those are purchases that I would think many, many times before I would even consider purchasing. Boy, when starting your collection is just because it's designed. I didn't mean you buy it, but in this sense. So let's say you go on eBay, you go on Poshmark, you go on a pre-love website. And let's say you really, 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 really want a Chanel bag, right? You go from high to low, but you see a busted Chanel bag that has scratches, that is like trash, and basically, and you know, it's still premium, it's still Chanel, and they're asking for $2,000, but the bag is absolutely trash, or let's say a bag has pilling or pain, or it's missing a button, or whatever the case is, so let's say a bag is missing, you know, the little, the little zipper pulls on both of them, or, you know, especially when I worked at Nordstrom, I would see like, you know, people would return some crazy stuff, and, you know, those will end up at last chance, but, you know, don't buy something um, that's like trash just because it says Chanel, just because it says Hermes, just because it says Louis Vuitton or Levon. Um, I think if you do like those brands and you do like it, I think it's worth in the longer run to wait it out and wait until you can get something. Maybe you, you can't afford to buy it full price, but a little bit of a better pre-love con condition or brand new condition on these pre-love websites. But I don't think you should buy, you know, a trash Dior monogram bag um, just because it's an authentic Dior bag. But yeah, it's not going to do anything for your style because the bag doesn't look good. And a bag, a shoes, how you maintain your items um, says a lot about you as a person as far as first impressions. So this could be, this could be a job interview. This could be a working meeting with your clients, going on a date, um, going to the bars, going to the airport, meeting family members for the first time. You know, people make first impressions and, you know, people may say, oh, she has a Prada bag. But when they really look at it, uh, do you really want a busted Prada bag? and you're just buying it $300 just because it says Prada when honestly you could maybe save a little bit more and maybe get a little bit of a better used condition Prada bag or maybe you could go into the contemporary space and maybe buy you know a contemporary you know coach, vintage coach handbag or a used coach handbag that's in really great condition or uh, from some other brands that are maybe been, maybe like let's say for example pre-love Givenchy is a lot more reasonable and really great condition than Chanel so maybe get a Givenchy handbag versus buying a Chanel so um, what I'm trying to say is just because it's designer and you know and you really want a Chanel bag but all the bags in your price range are basically trash and, sh and shit I'm just being honest doesn't mean you should buy it and it's not going to do anything for your out outfit or you're buying glasses that are super scratched or shoes that are really worn that have imprints that are disgusting absolutely not just because it says a brand and it's super worn and you just want it because it says that brand i think you're buying it for the wrong reasons and those are not going to do anything for your outfit or for your style so i will say i've seen people make that mistake quite a lot 
and it, it, you could really tell so that's my word of advice for you guys obviously you can restore bags you can fix bags but you have to keep in mind the time frame of that the cost of that and how well you're gonna have to maintain that will the chip will the paint come off so keep that in mind uh, word of advice just because it says Chanel just because it says Prada but it's in truly bad condition you, that means you sh just because it's that brand it shouldn't mean that you should buy it buy it because you love the brand but buy it because it's in really good condition or in somewhat manageable manageable condition that still looks presentable when you're walking around or living your best gate lot next worst item to start your collection is going to be anything that's costume jewelry i say i only have very minimal costume jewelry pieces and i will say i do like the pieces that i have but i never started my collection with costume jewelry um you know for me i tend to wear the same jewelry i'm wearing like these monica vinegar earrings that are like two different you know they're sterling silver i've had this one for like a year and a half i've had this one for about six months i'm wearing a classic roberto queen necklace that i bought a couple months ago um, my birthday gift a cartier watch but even back then i didn't start with these brands i started with even like sterling silver jewelry that you could buy on Amazon that didn't tarnish or little necklaces like that are uh, that are a little bit more sterling silver that maybe aren't designer or you know I started with like fossil watches and stuff which I still love and I would still wear but I wouldn't recommend buying costume jewelry particularly a lot of them have like embellishments or big details like think of think of Chanel I think Chanel's gonna be the main one I think your money is better spent off somewhere else and that includes for even like enamel like Hermes jewelry and stuff like that I don't think those are best first purchases I think you're better off getting like a David Yerman bracelet a Lagos bracelet um, or something more in that sense that's actually sterling silver steel that's gonna hold up a little bit better so for me I don't think that costume jewelry is worth the money and a lot of costume jewelry tends to be um, very very trendy for the most part so you won't catch me buying costume jewelry all the time I do have some I have two Versace costume jewelry, I have a Dior costume jewelry, a friendship bracelet, and I'm trying to think. I think that's it. I may have maybe one or two more. It's nothing compared to the items that I wear that's actual precious metal and that I love to use and then I could shower or I could take it off and I'm buying this Roberto Queen necklace. I never take it off. Um, I do take off my watch and my earrings just because I have you know wash my hair and stuff like that and the shower and earrings have been down the drain trust me been there done that but, um you know sometimes i don't take off like my necklaces and stuff so um i think that costume jewelry is something that you could save your money and spend it towards something else even like a shoe costume jewelry is pretty expensive for designer brands like a pack of your friendship bracelets 420 dollars a chanel brooch will, will cost you about 700 dollars um, so keep in mind you know those items add, add up and i think there's better value to get for something else and maybe if you do want a chanel item maybe not be a brooch maybe make it um a card case or maybe make it you know a, a silk scarf i think maybe there's a little bit more value if you're into that type of stuff but I will say costume jewelry is something that I really would recommend to start your collection because at the end of the day, it's costume jewelry and a lot of it, it you can get more wear and tear on it or if you go swimming, you forget about it or if a stone falls off, you have to send it to repair. So there's more upkeeping in that versus if it was precious metal to begin with. So costume jewelry, um, you know, I have I do purchase it, but nowhere near as to how I purchase my ratio of real jewelry, even if it's just basic sterling silver item that i don't think it's worth it are designer phone accessories i will say like phone sleeves like bandier or like you know i know some brands have it where you can put your phone in a little sleeve as a little crossbody i do see the value in that a lot of cell associates when i worked at nordstrom have that and still have it when you walk around when they're helping customers they have their phone very easy hands-free i do see the value in that or like for every day if you're the mommy on the go you have your tote but your phone's right here and you're carrying a child i do see the value in that but i'm talking about like um, iPhone cases, I'm talking about AirPod cases, I'm talking about, you know, just little sleeves just to even put your phone. I think those type of stuffs are not worth their, like, Louis Vuitton um, AirPods that they have. I think all those items are not worth your money, first of all. A lot of these items, like, the AirPod cases for a lot of these brands cost more than the actual AirPod or AirPod Pro. Some of these cases cost just as much as an iPhone. Um, and a lot of these sleeves, especially sleeves, sleeves can be very expensive, um, can just cost just as much as an iPhone as well. You know, especially as far as technology moves, I'm a little bit slow on technology. I don't change my phone every year. I change it probably about every two years. I'm probably up to, uh, due for a new phone 
by the time I'm now I'm kind of thinking I am kind of due for a new phone but I don't think it's worth spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of cases first of all a lot of cases are very fragile a lot of cases will get wear and tear very easily or if you drop your phone or you know whatever happens um, I don't think it's worth it and especially for airpod cases especially if it's made out just made out of silicone or plastic um, or even if it does have like a little bit of leather details um, you know I don't think those are longevity I think for your phone and for your AirPod cases, I think you should consider more of durability and more kind of safety for your items. So if you do drop it, it is test proof. If something happens to your AirPod, you know, if it drops, you know, sometimes I don't have a sleeve on mine, but if you drop it, sometimes the AirPods explode. Maybe there's a case where it kind of keeps it and you have to snap it open. I think that's more purpose in that and it will cost way less than, you know, a Gucci AirPod case or a St. Laurent AirPod case. I think designer phone accessories potentially see the value and a laptop sleep if you're planning to have that laptop for many years or you're going to continue to have the same thing but even then i personally wouldn't purchase one i don't need over um laptop sleeve that cost me 30 dollars on sale but that's about the most i'd spend as of now on that so designer phone accessories or tech accessories i think you're better off spending your money maybe if it's under 50 dollars like maybe like a cute caseify that it is test proof I think it's worth it. Uh, maybe like a QK speed one since it's a little bit more on the reasonable side, but maybe you do want it. I think that's reasonable. But once you start getting into like crazy pop sockets over $100 and stuff like that, I don't think it's worth your money. And I'm trying to make you save your money and to be a little bit more thoughtful about your purchases, especially right in the beginning where every dollar or, you know, where your purchases matter the most or you're trying to build a nice layer foundation for your collection. Uh, the next thing is going to be key rings. Um, I'm not talking about like Louis Vuitton key clays or like MCM, like little pouches that have like a place to put your cards, but then it has a key ring. So they're all together. I think those items have a lot of value, but I'm talking about like an Hermes key ring, a Chanel key ring, a Louis Vuitton key ring, especially if it has like beautiful details on it. A lot of those items will get scratched if it has a little beads. If you move it around, throw it around, or when you throw it in your counter, because I do that, you know, all those items will get so much wear out of it. Um, the only key ring that I have right now is a Bottega Veneta lanyard, and I kind of put a little knot in it, and it has like a little uh, a little D ring, and I put all my keys in there. Since it's just black woven leather, um, it's fine. It's not going to get anywhere. But I've seen people spend five hundred dollars on a Louis Vuitton key ring or an Hermes one, or a, like a Burberry teddy bear one, and they put their keys in there, and that, I've seen somebody's teddy bear get like disgusting destroyed, or you drop it on the floor by accident, or a child gets a hold of it. I just don't think there's a lot of value in very designer key rings. I think you can get really great options under $20. I just happened to get my Bottega one just because um, I got it offered on sale, and I'd been wanting kind of like a lanyard type of key ring, and I said, you know, it's black, it's woven leather, I do like Bottega. But I believe in January or February, and it, I literally don't even think about ever changing it. I think it's very purposeful, and I really like it. But like I said, if you go back to like the metal ones, like the Tiffany's and the Prada's, those are going to get a lot of wear easily, and I think your money, like two, three hundred dollars are worth better off on a sunglass, a card case, or even like a designer sew shoe that's half off that you're going to get a lot more wear out of, or even like a cashmere top. I think you get more wear on that than a um, key ring. I think your, mon your money is better off spent somewhere else. Next thing are going to be designer t-shirts, and the reason is, and this is the mistake that I did quite a lot when I first started my collection, is with certain ready-to-wear, I think when it comes to ready-to-wear, if you do want to start your collection, I think you're better off buying third pieces so like a coat like a canada goose coat a long max mara coat or maybe like some beautiful trousers um that are very tailored that are made out of wool that are great quality or a cashmere top i think those ready to wear pieces are more worth it than t-shirts or like sweatshirts and stuff just because those are items that make statements very easily so let's say you go out to a party or you go to school or whatever and you have uh, you know a burberry um shirt and you have the burberry plaid all over there's only a certain amount of times where you could actually wear that without people be like oh my god and they're like oh my god who are you talking about i was like remember last week that guy that wore that burberry birthday shirt and they're like oh i know who you're talking about now so it's like one of those items where you can't really get away with wearing it all the time or even like a weekly basis and i'll give you an example of this when i was at nordstrom when i got like kind of like a little bit of a reward or promotion the first thing that I bought was a Burberry birthday shirt. And so they took your picture and they put it on the wall at my local Nordstrom. And so my, North, my picture was there and I was wearing a Burberry plaid shirt and I still have the shirt somewhere around here. 
and I remember we had like a meeting and I happened to wear the same Burberry shirt and so whenever they put my picture on the uh, like on the projector I had to get up and like say oh thank you whatever I was wearing the same Bur Burberry shirt Bur Burberry birthday shirt and it was so embarrassing like that picture was taken like a month before and I'm still wearing the same shirt so that's kind of like a lesson learned that you know like for example this Vince cashmere top I've had it for two years I always bring it out and I always wear it but since it doesn't have any branding it's good quality I'm gonna wear it all the time not saying that that Burberry shirt wasn't good quality but it's less distinguishable I can I'm I can get I can get away with wearing this every week versus a Burberry that's very plaid or like a Balmain t-shirt or a Gucci t-shirt or a off-white t-shirt um, you can't really get away with wearing it as much. So I think designer t-shirts um, are something that I would wait. They're nice, but there's not. it's not an item for me that I can see a lot of versatility, if I'm being honest. And if it didn't say that brand, would you really would you really be able to pay that price? Uh, the answer is probably not. Um, like I have like a St. Laurent basic white t-shirt. It doesn't even say St. Laurent or the ones that are the row that cost me, um, you know, $100. $100. You know, I like them because I genuinely like the brands and I don't care, you know, if people think it's a $5 shirt or a row shirt, you know, that's between me, but the average person wouldn't do that. Um, so I will say t-shirts um, or things that are very logo mania that are ready to wear, um, I would highly avoid when starting your collection, unless you got it like that or unless, you know, you're okay with like, oh, being known for wearing like that Balenciaga jacket that says Balenciaga, like Balenciaga hoodie all the time. Just a word of advice from me, because I did pass through an embarrassing little thingy, a little gig, a little gay fantasy gig. And my last two, the next one's going to be a designer face mask. For example, I know Versace has face masks for well over $100. Uh, Off-White has face masks for $200. Um, I've seen brands charge up to $300 for face masks. Um, I don't think that those are worth the money. If you really do want it as a preventative measure, I think you should actually get like an actual like medical mask. I don't think you should buy an off-white, but also I don't like it because it's very messy. I don't like a printed mask unless you're wearing it like a full look. I think it looks cute, but you know, there's only so many times you could wear that and you would have to wash it every time, you know, and a lot of the screen prints, a lot of those prints can get a lot of wear because a lot of dry cleaners aren't gonna dry clean your face mask. You're gonna have to wash it maybe even if you put them in gentle cycle or hand wash them or you know and inside of a lingerie bag, very light cycle. Uh, those face masks will get a lot of wear, especially if you're planning to wear every single day or maybe whenever it's necessary. I just personally don't see the value in face masks that are designer in general. I think the more simpler ones are maybe face masks under 50 bucks. Maybe I could justify kind of like the Toy Birch ones that are three for 35. I don't know if they still sell those. I, that's a little bit more justifiable or if you see like a cute one at Target for under $10, I think it's more justifiable or just even disposable masks. I think those are more justifiable. But for me to spend, you know, over $100 on a face mask, unfortunately that's something that I don't see myself doing in the near future. I just don't see the value in them and I don't think you should be purchasing them. If anything, if you do want to elevate your mask experience, Maybe buy like a little chain for your face mask or something like that where you can kind of let it hang while you're eating or whatever. I think I see more value in the chain because you could reuse that chain many times or you can, especially on certain chains, if it has that little rubber side, you can put them in your sunglass. You can use it as a little sunglass chain. But designer face mask is something that I would avoid and I don't think it's worth your money. Actually, I just thought about another one. I'm just going to go ahead and put it here. I also think that designer hair accessories are not worth your money. So brands are trying to come up with a lot of things to take your money, to take your coins. Yes, a lot of these things are cute and beautiful, but you know, think second before buying some of these items. So I'm talking about like the cute little Chanel pins or the cute little, you know, Versace silk scrunchies or the Prada uh, nylon scrunchie. Those are really pretty. I think they're so adorable, um, but I just feel like it's going on your hair and there's only, you know, at the end of the day, it's a scrunchie that not everyone's, not everyone's going to see a Prada scrunchie plaque. You know, everyone's going to be, you know, I just don't see the point in spending a lot of money on hair accessories. Like I said, if you're at a point collection where you have everything or you have a good foundation, then I say go for it. If you want it, I say go for it. But especially right in the beginning, I think hair accessories are worth worthless and not worth your money. And they kind of goes hand on hand with costume jewelry. 
And the last thing that I think is not worth your money, especially when starting your collection, are getting items or buying items just because so and so has it, or so and or you, somebody that in high school has it. So let's say you're in college and you see 10 other people with a Gucci belt, and now you feel like you want one to fit in, or you want a Louis Vuitton never full to fit in or you want Gucci A sneakers, but you're just buying them for the wrong reasons. You're being more of a follower than a leader. Don't get me wrong, if you genuinely love the shoe, I have Gucci A sneakers, I love them. I have you know bags that are a little bit more popular than some other ones and that some people may consider basic, but I still love it. But I just would think twice if you're buying something for the wrong reasons and buy something that you love a little bit more. If you're, let's say, at the boutiques or like let's say at Saks Fifth Avenue and you're seeing, you're going between, let's say, um, a Saint Laurent handbag or maybe this Loewe Bay puzzle bag, but you may, you may say, well, I really love this Loewe Bay puzzle bag a lot. I love it. And then you say, oh, I really love the YSO, but it says YSO on it, so I'm going to go for that. But you're basically buying it for YSO, but you're not in love with it as much as the Loewe Bay puzzle bag. You're buying it for the wrong reasons. I would go for the one that you genuinely love a little bit more. So um, I would just say um, just because everyone has it or just because it has a branding and you feel like just because it doesn't have a logo or it's just not as popular doesn't mean you should, shouldn't go for it. I think you should buy things that go with your personal style and that you genuinely love. Guys, these are going to be um, the worst items to start your collection or kind of the things that I don't necessarily buy a whole, whole lot for myself. Hope you guys love this video and I gave you some word of advice. Um, let me know what are other things that you feel like are not worth your money. And let me know if you think I'm right or wrong on any of these opinions and or choices. I would love to hear your opinions and your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I love each and every single one of you. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, guys, and take care.